Good morning, church family. St. Francis of Assisi. On this third Sunday of Advent, a special welcome for those who are visiting us today. The, the third Sunday of Advent is called Gaudete, Gaudete Sunday, which means rejoice. We are visited by three messengers today. The first is Isaiah, with a message of hope and joy, a year of favor, a day of vindication. Next comes St. Paul with a message for the Thessalonians that we can take to heart as well, advising us how to live while we wait for Christ's return. Finally, we hear from Jesus' messenger, John the Baptist, who came to testify to the Messiah. Let this be an opportunity to refocus our attention on the true reason we celebrate this time of year and rejoice because the Lord is near. Please let us stand. Lord Jesus, you free us from the bondage of sin. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you heal what is broken. 
Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you clothe us in justice. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of God, you will take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You will take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You will receive at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. My soul rejoices in my God. My soul rejoices in my God. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has looked upon his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. My soul rejoices in my God. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him, in every generation. My soul rejoices in my God. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to help of all his servants of Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy. My soul rejoices in my God. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In all circumstances, give thanks, for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophetic utterance. Test everything. Retain what is good. Refrain from every kind of evil. May the God of peace make you perfectly holy, and may you entirely, spirit, soul, and body, be preserved blameless for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, the one who calls you faithful, and he will also accomplish it. The word of the Lord. Amen.
you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. A man named John was sent from God. He came for testimony to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to testify to the light. And this is the testimony of John. When the Jews from Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to him to ask him, Who are you? He admitted and did not deny it, but admitted, I am not the Christ. So they asked him, What are you then? Are you Elijah? And he said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. So they said to him, Who are you? So we can give an answer to those who send us. What do you have to say for yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the desert. May stray the way of the Lord. As Isaiah, the prophet, said, some Pharisees were also sent. They asked him, Why then do you baptize if you are not the Christ, or Elijah, or the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water, but there is one among you whom you do not recognize, the one who is coming after me, whose sandal strap I am not worthy to untie. This happened in Bethany, across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. Someone would ask you, what Old Testament passage do you read most frequently during Advent and Christmas? Old Testament, that is. What prophet? What reading would you would you say? What would you uh, tell that person? The answer is found in that book of Isaiah. The reason being that. Jesus exercised his ministry in the spirit of Isaiah. Here in those poetic verses and images of harmony and compassion for the poor, and also how the Lord makes justice spring up among the nations. And listening to the first verse we hear, and the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring glad tidings to the lowly, to heal the brokenhearted. So it goes on that we experience joy. Third Sunday of Advent. It's a time for us to increase our joy. So what is it in our lives that brings us joy? Sometimes we express our spirituality a little bit more in and among people when we're in difficulties, in despair, rather than when we're having good times. This morning I was going down the road. Right before me there was a Amish carriage. And so the, some of the Amish are more at giving praise to God than we are. Sometimes we forget that food on their table stove in the kitchen. You don't have to go out and cut wood. You got electricity, you can turn on the microwave, whatever. Those are the little things of joy in our life. We need to 
conjure up, up in our mind continually. Think about them. Good people before us <clears throat> will give us so many convenience and comforts in this world. Isaiah was the first to articulate that the, the God of the Jews was also the God of all people on earth. To think of John's ministry out there in the deserts. And it's this week where we hear from not from John the Evangelist who tells us rather than St. Mark. So John the Evangelist tells us how the people were questioning our questioning John the Baptist there. Who was he? They wanted to identify him as he the Christ. So uh, you think of his preaching. Was it to the Jewish people or to everyone? Jesus seemed to preach to everyone. But John the Baptist, he preaches to the Jewish people to repent. Not the outsiders, not those pagans outside. John the Baptist was caught up in the preaching for his generation, for the coming Messiah. But he wasn't sure how Christ would come into the world, the anointed one. He brings in those subjects that Jesus would preach about justice issues in the world that our baptism we think the anointing room in that first verse of Isaiah when we are anointed with that sacred chrism that's placed upon our heads in the form of a cross many of us recall those words when we listen to the baptismal rite there as Christ was appointed priest prophet and king so May you live always as a member of his body, sharing everlasting life. We become Christ-like through the rich graces we receive. To be one who gives a helping hand to the needy, feeding the hungry, visiting the sick, those in prison, and giving life to the community of faith by whatever means is necessary. Some days ago, a leading expert on the subject of evangelization presented us the dioceses that we have, priests, deacons, and many of those are lay leaders in our churches with some pointers on how to move the people from the pew to a personal conversion of our Lord. He said that we need to encourage the faithful to become much more familiar with Holy Scripture and the catechism of our church as well. That they become confident to transform others in this world who are in despair, who have no thought of God in their lives. There's sometimes in our lives when we find joy in the Christmas gift giving, when somebody receives a gift that we have given them. And so there's joy. There's this author, a Jesuit, who tells a story about a salesman who traveled extensively throughout the free world. Oh, well, one of his great hardships was being away from his beloved wife. He said to himself, he said, I will go and find her a gift, bring it home to her. So there he goes in the shop there, somewhere in Europe. And so he finds a special gift. There it was before the salesman there at the counter. He, he shuts off the light and says, he opens this box with this rock in it. And so he says, this is the way you explain to your wife how much you love her. As this little reflections of light come through that rock, the different cracks and crevices. So with great joy, the husband was convinced. He bought the precious stone, took it home for his wife, but he kept it in a suitcase for a month there. This is long ago. And so upon returning home, right after dinner, he opens up, she opens up the box. And she sees it's just a rock. 
And so he, he goes and shuts the light off and nothing. Nothing happens. There's no glow. Nothing. It was a terrible experience for him. So uh, he got angry. He thought he was taken by the salesman. And so he, he sits down and his wife gives him a kiss and she says, I love you all the same. Well, the next day she took the little box over to her neighbor who spoke English and French and she wanted her to translate those little letters, and little words on the bottom of the box. So said, if you want me to shine in the dark, expose me to light. Sometimes our spirit is in a box. The love that we have for God and others in this created world is shut tight. We don't want to release it. To evangelize and bring the good news is like John. To be out there out there in the wilderness, not in fear, but in faith, to bring the good news to people in this world. So may we always see this time of the pandemic, a time of bringing joy to others in this world who, who mourn the death of, of their friends and families and are caught in fear that we, in this age, should be ever so thankful that we have people out there who are intelligent, who find ways to stem this despair that we have to bring a vaccine into this world. And also, this day, let us pray and give joy to those who care for the many in our nursing homes and hospitals. Hospitals that are, that are full of people who are in need faith.
we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our Jewish brothers and sisters who began celebrating Hanukkah, the festival of lights, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the poor, the brokenhearted, captives, and prisoners, that they might know a year of favor from the Lord, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may heed the words of St. Paul and retain what is good and refrain from every kind of evil as we await the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Virgin Guadalupe inspire us to build a strong community of faith rooted in the endless love of God that we share. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are sick, especially those who have the coronavirus. And we lift up today Tony DeLeo, Shelley Collins, that Jesus come upon them, bring them comfort and healing. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those who have died, today we lift up Ed Slack from whom this uh, Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our heart, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us also pray for as Sam Warren who died this past week, the repose of his soul, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And our Heavenly Father, you give us every good gift here on this earth. May we always express the joy and gratitude for being alive here in this world. Strengthen us through this holy mystery that we receive strength, the Spirit. We bring these prayers before you. We ask that you grant these through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Give the Lord's sacrifice in your hands. Praise the Lord's name. For our good and follow the Holy Church. May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what would be God in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplish for us your saving work through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. And the Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed in his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all he is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. So with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers in heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Most honored and highest, blessed is he who comes to the name of the Lord. So You are indeed holy, O oh Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working with the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to your Son, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O oh Lord, we humbly implore you. By the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, He said, blessing, gave the challenge to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it. For this is a chalice of my blood, blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Francis of Assisi, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, we have our bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family who you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O oh, merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, <coughs> to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestowed on the world all that is good. <coughs> through him and with him and in him, O oh God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb.
us pray. We implore your mercy, Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feast through Christ our Lord. Just a few announcements. Uh, last night we had two Masses uh, celebrating the third Sunday of Advent, but also celebrating uh, Our Lady of uh, Bridging with the Loop. Uh, it was kind of, uh, compared with prior years, it was low, but it's still we had about 225 altogether uh, celebrating uh, these operations of Virgin Guadalupe in Mexico. Uh, our patrons, patrons of all the Americas, so uh, South America, Central America, and other, around the world. I find out that I was reading a little bit more about it, and Puerto Rico, who also that are coming from, is, is our patron. Uh, in 1709, if I'm not mistaken, he was proclaimed as patron of uh, Puerto Rico. Uh, I, I didn't know that part. Uh, but anyway, uh, Christmas celebration, just to go through that, uh, on the vigil on the 24th, Mass in English will be at 4 o'clock, and the Spanish Mass will be at 6. On the 25th, uh, will be in English at 10 o'clock. Father Fran will be presiding. Uh, as you leave, please uh, go in through those two doors here and exit in the Fellowship Hall doors. Just as a prevention, uh, there on the right hand side, when you make it that corner turn, uh, there is a round table for English bulletins and other goodies, uh, if you would like. Um, there are still blue books for reflections for during this Advent and uh, Christmas time. So if you haven't taken one, uh, I think it helps us to center ourselves into the coming of Jesus. Birthdays. Joanne. Come to the cross. <laughs> Come to the cross. Oh, let us pray. God's blessings. Upon Joanne as she celebrates another year of life here in this world. And she will always be grateful for the good things that she has received with family, friends, and especially her faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. She shows us the way, the truth, and the life. God's blessing to the Father, the Son, Holy Spirit.